treat everyone today i'm showing you the magic potion for making perfectly dipped and round cake pops out of an actual ball of cake without any rolling required the two methods are a silicone mold and a baby cakes machine these tips are for anyone that's not about the dough whether you're not a fan of the traditional cake pop taste and play dough like texture or you just don't like rolling them by hand. With the right recipe and techniques, it's definitely possible to achieve a smooth, spectacular look without the dough method and how to prevent common mistakes. No craters that look like a moon or a thick lollipop rim around the edges. Nobody will be able to spot the difference between rolled or not rolled. Plus, how to assemble these super fun cake pop cones for your Halloween party or spooky small business orders. So let's go inside the haunted cottage laboratory and create something magical. When it comes to tips on what not to do, our friend Charlie the Crow is warning us to beware of cake mix when using a cake pop machine or mold. For the equipment, we have the Baby Cakes Cake Pop Maker. Unfortunately, the pink one with the flipping function has been discontinued. Currently, the standard machine is the only one available, and the other method I'm showing you is the silicone molds. I prepared the cake mix exactly with the instructions from the back of the box, so let's go ahead and fill all the cavities and see what happens for the spooky result. The reason why I love the flip machine is that it prevents lopsided cake pops. However, with the right recipe, you won't encounter that problem. As you can see for the side-by-side -side example, the purple machine without the flip function made a lopsided shape that won't look too nice on a stick. And although the pops in the flip machine aren't lopsided, there's lots of texture which is also seen on the pops I baked in the mold. It creates lots of holes and craters on the surface which isn't a professional look for dipping. Although I tried hand mixing the batter to prevent forming extra air pockets, that didn't help. Box mix tends to rise or expand more, explaining why it has an inflated look that distorts the round shape. Charlie the Crow says he wants a snack on them since they're still tasty. However, if you want pretty pops, homemade from scratch is the way to go instead of the mix. So let's head to our kitchen laboratory and open up our book of potions for the magic recipe. It's a super delicious and moist vanilla cake pop recipe that's from the Love From The Oven blog. And it's usually found in the little manual that comes with your machine. Start by adding one stick of softened butter to your mixing bowl with one cup of sugar and cream those together until light and fluffy. It's important to have all ingredients, the butter, milk, and eggs at room temperature and not cold. Next, pour in two eggs, two teaspoons of vanilla extract, a quarter teaspoon of salt and beat the mixture together really well until fully incorporated. At this point, you don't have to worry about over mixing. Go ahead and mix away so it's smooth and creamy without any lumps. For the steps that follow, take over by hand mixing and put the mixer aside. Then alternate between the dry and wet ingredients a little at a time. Total, there's one and a half cups of flour, one teaspoon of baking powder and a half a cup of milk. I drop in a third of the flour, fold it in, then switch off with a third of the milk and repeat until all additions are folded into the batter. Now we're all ready to fill the mold or machine with batter. I'll be demonstrating the machine method first. Just be sure to spray the plates with non-stick. I highly recommend filling the wells with a piping bag for a thicker batter that's made from scratch like this one. It's much easier to squeeze. A dispenser is better for controlling a looser batter like a store-bought cake mix from the box. To prevent a deflated shape, Fill the wells up to the line. Note the machine should still be turned off to ensure the cooking is as even as possible. 
Lock the top lid in place and give the machine a shake to distribute the batter. Once everything is ready, you can turn the machine on and cook for 4 minutes. They will appear done around the 3 minute mark, however don't be fooled, the cake will still be raw in the middle. The best way to check that it's done is with the toothpick test. It passes the test when you see the toothpick comes out clean. The thick rim or lollipop look around the center can easily be removed by sweating the cake. If you've seen my other cake pop tutorial, I explain the sweating process in detail. In this case, all you need to do is immediately remove the cake balls from the machine and place into a Ziploc bag. Since they're still warm, condensation should be seen inside the bag and will lock in all the moisture. Just put it aside to sweat for 4 hours. Taking that same batter, we're going to fill up the cavities of the mold. Remember to spray the surface with nonstick first. This batter is fabulous, but I wanted to compare results of the mold versus the machine. Tap the mold onto the counter to settle the batter and enclose the top by fitting the lid right over it. A tip is to place some butter knives in between each row to keep the lid down during baking. Pop the mold in the oven to bake for 20 minutes at 350 degrees and it's time to uncover the magic. Even before sweating, the cake balls look spectacular right out of the oven and they cook so evenly. A perfect vanilla cake pop. Transfer them into a Ziploc bag while they're still warm, just as we did earlier with the machine. And after sweating for 4 hours, that minimal rim will peel right off. Before they're finished sweating, some useful cleaning tips are to pick up all the scraps and remove the residue by wiping down the plates with a warm soapy rag and dry with a paper towel. You want to clean the machine in between each batch to remove that residue and do not submerge it in water. As for the silicone mold, it's really simple, just clean with soap and water in the sink. When 4 hours have passed, the sweating process is complete and we can finally clean them up nice and easy by taking a toothpick and kitchen shears. Carefully trim the excess cake around the rim and smooth it out with the toothpick using quick back and forth motions without applying too much pressure. And finish it off by rolling the cake around on a silicone mat to smooth everything out. Sweating the cake allows the rim to fall off seamlessly without damaging the exterior of the cake ball. The technique works well on both the mold and baby cakes. However, the winner for me that takes the cake is the molded version. They're as close to the traditional rolled cake pops as you can get without being able to tell the difference when they are dipped. If you're a perfectionist, the molded ones bake more evenly than the baby cakes and are slightly rounder. It's all about which method you prefer. I'm modeling how to assemble the cake pop cones with the molded version. The perfect size of ice cream cones are the Joy Mini Ice Cream Cups. They can usually be found at Walmart. The best tool to make a small hole is the cookie scribe. Start by twisting it right through the crisscross in the middle as your guide. Then flip the cone over and go through the other side, rotating with the scribe to widen the hole without breaking the cone. The job is done if you can pass your 6 inch lollipop stick right through. Set up all the cones this way first because once we dip, it needs to be ready to go. Begin by inserting your stick into the cake pop with a small amount of chocolate as the glue and allow them to set for 15 minutes to give the chocolate a chance to form a plug. Once secured, dip the cake pop as you normally would, quickly shaking the excess chocolate off and slide the stick right through the cone before it dries, holding in place for about 10 seconds. The process is a lot easier than it looks when all the decorating materials are organized. I have several colors of chocolate for the different designs, white, purple, and lime green. The only designs I'm making with the rolling method are the Mickey pumpkin and poison apple since they're special shapes created from a cake pop dough. However, if shapes aren't your thing and you like this method, that part is completely optional. 
if you've seen my other cake pop video before, you already know the cake maze can be any flavor of Pillsbury. So I chose perfectly pumpkin for pumpkin spice and everything nice. The following recipe is one box of Pillsbury mix of your choice, two eggs, as well as half a cup of milk, three quarters a cup of water, and four tablespoons of melted butter. Disregard the instructions and avoid using oil. It's poison for this potion since it can cause your cake pops to leak. Our helpers Frankenstein and Charlie the Crow agree that butter is better for a smooth, firm dough. Mix it all up until well combined and transfer the batter into a pan that has been greased and lined with parchment paper. The size of my pan is 8 by 12 inches. It's key not to overbake or brown the cake, otherwise the dough will have dry crumbs in it. Instead of following the box instructions, drop the temperature to 325 and bake for 20 to 25 minutes or until a toothpick comes out clean. The magic step to never skip is the sweating. While the cake is still hot from the oven and inside the pan, cover the top with aluminum foil for about 30 minutes. Then after it's cool enough to safely remove from the pan, wrap the cake in plastic wrap and seal inside Ziploc bags overnight. The segment shown here is the next day and it's time to slice up the cake for the mixer and prepare the dough. And guys, if you're new here, thank you for stopping by my channel. Channel. Be sure to join the party and subscribe for more spooky treat tutorials and hit that bell to get all notifications. First start mixing on medium speed with your paddle attachment and gradually increase the speed. There's no need to add any frosting with this dough. The goal is to keep mixing until all the small crumbs go away. The mixer does all the work by kneading it into a smooth firm dough that pulls away from the side of the bowl. Let's get ready to roll for a super fun pumpkin shape. I take this meatball scoop from Amazon to scoop out my dough. For any advanced shapes, you'll need one and a half to two scoops. Go ahead and combine both of them. To eliminate cracks, flatten it out into a compact patty shape with lots of pressure. Then ease up the pressure as you cup in your hands to create a smooth round ball. Place the large ball inside the pumpkin mold from My Little Cake Pop and squeeze the mold shut. There's lots of pressure so it's much better to have the extra dough as a cushion rather than not enough to prevent cracks. Finish by blending in the seam with a toothpick or lollipop stick and it should look something like this. Another cool shape is an apple without a mold for a realistic poison apple. Once you have a round ball, taper the edges into an oval similar to an egg shape. Then flatten out the top and bottom and it will start to look just like an apple. Play around with it until reaching your desired results. Here I'm dipping the rolled pops we made as a canvas before decorating. The rolled dough should always be at room temperature when dipping into the chocolate, never cold. Dip the pumpkin shape into orange chocolate and slide the stick through the cone just as we did earlier in the video. And do the same with the apple. I can't wait to transform the plain apple into a poison apple and all of the cones into our favorite Disney characters. When attaching the ears, I do this a bit differently. Typically, you put the candy melts on before and dip to cover over the ears. Although it works, it's too crammed with that little cone platform on the bottom for certain two-tone designs that require more room for piping details. For example, Minnie's polka dot skirt. My alternative method is to dip about halfway in the black color to leave enough room while accomplishing the look. And to create the ears, I have black Merkins wafers and a circle cookie cutter to cut off a small section for a Mickey or mini ear shape. In order to attach them as cleanly as possible, apply a neat layer of chocolate with a toothpick so you only pick up the amount that you need and gently hold it for 15 seconds. It's always helpful to have a picture of mini handy if you're unsure of the placements. Dress up mini skirt by piping polka dots with orange chocolate, alternating up and down in a diagonal pattern. 
Not only do the ears blend in nicely, there was also enough room to pipe her stylish skirt. All she's missing are her orange bow and some sparkle. I made her bow with this mold. I will be sure to link this along with all spooky essentials in the description box down below. On the back of the bow, I pipe an X of chocolate across to make contact with the ears. And last for her makeup, she loves this Wilton edible glitter spray for a touch of sparkle. And she's all ready for the Halloween party. Next, the Mickey Ghost is a cute classic that matches my cookie jar. Attach the ears onto a white cake pop cone with the toothpick trick and pipe a curved smile with stiff consistency chocolate. Cutting the tiniest hole in the piping bag achieves thin pen-like lines. Underneath the smile, I piped an opening for the mouth, a jelly bean shaped nose, and two oval eyes with a looser consistency chocolate. Pumpkin Mickey lights up any room like a jack-o'-lantern. Keep in mind the molded pumpkin has lots of ridges, so the face would be a challenge to pipe. I made my own DIY eyes, nose, and jack-o'-lantern grin out of black fondant with cookie cutters, and I stuck them on with dab and hold edible adhesive. For the stem, I dipped a pretzel stick in green chocolate. Since the pretzel stick is a bit heavy, I suggest holding to anchor in place until set before letting go. Last but not least are his signature mini pumpkin ears. This 3D mini pumpkin mold is the perfect size without being too large. I will link it down below. To make it all around more 3D and realistic, I glue two pumpkins together with some chocolate and place where Mickey's ears would go. It must be fun having pumpkins for ears. Pumpkin Mickey is the cutest pumpkin in the patch. Now Frankenstein Minnie Mouse wants to join the party. Of course she wants her drip hairstyle done. I have a medium consistency chocolate in my piping bag and alternate the length of the drips with the downwards dragging motion. Then fill in between the ears and add her purple bow before her hair dries. For her scar, I pipe a diagonal line in the bottom corner with a few shorter lines. The pen-like tip helps with that. And spray on the glitter spray to hold her glam hairstyle in place. A unique trendy design is the Mickey Jack Skellington. Pipe the outline of the eyes. I can't really explain the shape. I would say it's similar to a horizontal teardrop two tiny nostrils underneath, and a super wide grin starting from where the left ear ends to the right, and several stitches over it. Last, I fill in the outlines with a looser consistency chocolate to softly blend in. The Evil Queen is the expert on her iconic poison apple. The design is scaled a lot smaller on a cake pop compared to an actual apple, so be sure to keep the details small enough to fit. Pipe two angle cutouts for the eyes and a keyhole shape for the nose, all in a stiff consistency to hold the definition. Next, attach the pretzel stick stem. Then continue piping drips across the front of the face with a drip consistency. And close the outline on top as a little mask. I fill this in as quickly as possible, being careful not to get any chocolate inside the outlines. It's super easy to finish by dripping all around the back with more drips that vary in length. And we'll have that same textured dripping effect of the actual poison apple. I hope you guys enjoyed making these Disney Halloween cake pop cones and you learned something new. Give this video a thumbs up if you did and it gave you some inspiration to capture all the magic of Disney this Halloween season. It's Christina here, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next spooky video.